We arrived in roughly the 20th of December of 04 and took over from the 298 CSB. Uh, they did a good job of what was here, but as things progress, as things go along, we realized that there, there needed to be more, more MWR stuff for the soldiers because the soldiers that we're taking care of are mainly truckers and a maintenance company and water purification. And so the, with them out on the road, uh, getting hit with IDs and things like that. We really felt the need to, to keep them, to help boost morale. And my OIC, Major Wallace, as well as Colonel Hardy, were kind enough to let me get kind of free from the office, if you will, and to get a team together to start building. The first thing was with this bunker. It's a, a large two-area bunker. And... Uh, the idea for the coffee house came about because the previous unit, the 1484, did some of the floor and it was just perfect for the vision of the coffee shop. And since then we've had uh, some carpenters, Master Sergeant Campos, Staff Sergeant Albertson, come in and help and redo a lot of it. It's really turned out nice. It's real rustic looking and uh, got some, some painters in and just a lot of volunteers that have in January, February, a lot, mainly in March, really worked on, on getting this place to put together. We've got uh, kind of a dragonfly effect on the wall that we're kind of going with, as well as the rustic wood look. And we're not trying to paint it too much, just enough to, to, to make it look decent and look good. Uh, we've got our rules up on the wall, which have worked very, very, very nicely. Uh, pretty basic rules, no cursing, no chewing, no cussing. Uh, we've got a 25 cent fine for cussing that Sergeant Blake from uh, the 704th came up with. And she's my counterpart that works with me on this stuff. And uh, that's been really nice because the military, we use a lot of cursing. But in this situation, we've limited that. And it's, it's been, uh, what's the right word? Comforting. Not to, not to hear all the, the harsh language. And everybody's done really well. Those who haven't have donated to the, the fine fund. So it's gone really well. The, we opened three weeks ago today and uh, have grown phenomenally ever since. Uh, at first, uh, we had the idea of taking care of the soldiers, and it really is. It, it's for the soldiers. All this is to support the soldiers. It was, uh, the lack of the MWR facilities here was critical to, to increase the morale. Uh, since then, with a lot of different volunteers. We've really got this shop up and running. And with a lot of teamwork from the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, uh, Army Reserves, the Guard, uh, contractors, civilian contractors, the firefighters, we've all come together to get this up and running. Now that we've been open three weeks, we're averaging 150 to 200 soldiers and civilians through the doors every day. We're supposed to get an espresso machine here pretty soon, which will be kind of kind of fun for us to learn and, and uh, to manage, we'll see how busy it gets then. Right, but the main thing, the main thing is, it's for the soldiers. I mean, it, it's they need it. 
and uh, they've appreciated it, and they're like, wow, they come in, they say, you know, there's no other place, these truckers, there's no other place than that they've been in Iraq that's even remotely close to this. And I think it's important that, that it's kind of what I call old school, MWR. It's run by soldiers, done by soldiers, volunteer work with a few of us as guides, NCOs, to guide the way as well as the OIC, Major Wallace. And it's worked out extremely well. We work on donation only, and people have been very generous so far to, to help us out. How does it impact them? They, let me think of some quotes, you know, they, they, they come in and they're like, this is so nice. It's so nice to, to be able to relax and not necessarily be a soldier, to, but to be a person to communicate with everybody and just to talk shop. It's kind of like a coffee shop at home, to sit around and just visit about what everybody else does and uh, how things are going back in the real, real world, how family's going. And so it's been a real benefit. It's almost like a debriefing. They, they can come in, they can come down, they can relax uh, and just be themselves. Whereas most other places you go, you can't be. You're a soldier 100% of the time. Here, you're a person. And it's nice to have that, that outlet. You know, it's been, it's been tremendous. It is. It's just, everybody loves it. I mean, we have, like I said, uh, the KBR, the Air Force, everybody comes in and they love it and then they, they say, hey, I can volunteer some time to help you with this project or this project or this project and we take it because we're all extremely busy I mean days of, anybody that's at war knows that you hardly ever get a day off and you're working 10 12 hours a day and so we take what we can and we assemble our little teams to do certain projects and we we try to knock it out because we've come a long ways but we've got a, we've got some neat stuff that we're gonna do ahead of us yet too and it's nice to have the support from everybody and it works the coffee shop works really well as an old-school barter and trade type of thing because we have different people with different skills to offer as well as different tools and equipment so that we can come together and work as a team, a TQ team, Altakatum team, and uh, knock things out around here. If we didn't have that, we'd be, we'd be way behind on schedule. It is. It, it's, it's truly for the soldiers. It, it's for the people that come through the door. It's not about us that are, that are putting it on and doing it. It's truly for the soldiers, for them. And for the, the support of the civilians, the, the Marines, everybody comes in here. And it, the focus is them, to, to help them be more comfortable in country, to help them relax. The future? The, the back we're putting in the, the MWR, we've got a pool table, foosball, ping pong, uh, and in one of the rooms. In the other room, we're going to hopefully be internet outlet and then build another room for phones, an additional phone system, and then a library. And like I said, hopefully this week, the colonel was nice enough to give me a suspense state of trying to get an espresso machine by next Monday. So uh, I'll be hustling around to, to see what I can do, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with one so we can kind of expand our, our choices of coffee and espresso. Uh, eventually it would be nice to do, as it gets hotter through the summer, to do some summer drinks. Some, if we can get some frozen uh, fruit and things like that, we'd be, we'd be a real happen, happening place. It's, it's to total donation. If a soldier comes in and doesn't have any money at the time, so be it. They don't have to donate. Uh, there's no minimum, there's no maximum, donations only, and it's worked extremely well. It, Do they embrace the donations? They, they have no problem with it. And usually it's a, the, they come in with buddies, and they, uh, hey, I'll get it today, and they, they throw in their, their change, their pogs, their, their dollars, their fives. And so, so far it's worked out extremely well, extremely well. Oh, yeah, we're working very hard on expanding staff because currently we, we run from seven, usually 7 or 8 in the morning to about 3 in the afternoon because we've got uh, Sergeant Blake, myself, Major Wallace, uh, and that's about it. And so we're trying hard to, to get our staff together, and we've been able to use uh, like soldiers on profile and, and soldiers on their down day, which, which is nice. They have one down day a week, and they're donating four hours, six hours, so that we can come in and, and get them trained, so we can expand our hours to the 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., 10 p.m. What does that say to you when uh, you have soldiers that come here on their down day and volunteer to work to make this place a, a better place to make it one more smooth? I, I'd like to think that it says that we've done a good job of getting this together, and they want to be a part of it, and so the team effort comes together, and to come in and to relax, because down day you can get, you know, get some of the laundry done and things like that, but at the same time, if you want to relax, Sometimes it's hard in the room. Sometimes you just have to sit here and visit and talk to with whoever walks through the door to help them relax. 
good question. That we're still soldiers and we're still people. And when we're when we don't have the opportunity to, to get certain supplies and things like that, that we're working as a team and making it happen and that we care. And we take care of each other. I think soldiers always have and always will. When time is time, times are tough, you, you bond and you, you, you make it happen. Because we said if we're going to be here for a year, let's make this place livable. This is, this is entirely separate of, of AFES. Um, it had been suggested that we maybe turn it over to AFES, um, but I was in, uh, me and Major Wallace and many of us were in strong uh, thought that soldiers have put this up and soldiers will run this. And uh, by using the donation, we, you know, we keep it, you know, somebody can pay a quarter for a cup of coffee. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Some of the coffee, I do need to mention some of the coffee. Um, I logged on to a couple internet sites. Soldiers Angels Network has been one that's, that's uh, they verbally committed 1.5 tons of coffee and coffee beans coming our way. And it's starting to roll in the last three days. We're starting to get a lot of packages. So we're, uh, I was doing, we were doing hand thank you notes. But now we had to type up a little paragraph of thanking them. And then as soon as we get it in, uh, open it up, get the thank you note. And if it's something special, put a little hand, extra hand on the bottom and sign it so we can get it back, so we can keep it. Let them know back in the States of what they're doing for us. We appreciate it. 1.5 uh, tons. 1.5 tons is what. That's a lot. Yeah. For the soul of this place to have it being run by the soldiers. There's no, there's no doubt. There's no doubt in our mind that soldiers come in that see us doing the work, and, they, and then they see everybody else helping out with whatever. Maybe wiping tables. You know, somebody will come from another table and Say, hey, let's, somebody spilled over there. Let me go wipe that up. And it's that team effort. And I really think that, that bonds us together. I have had, we had a day of painting where we had uh, 12 or so soldiers that volunteered, uh, majors to lieutenants to E1s to E2s that came in, and we all did our own. We said, hey, we can do this, like the, the stenciling on the, on the coffee bar back there. And a, a lieutenant, a medical lieutenant. She's like, hey, I can... I've never done it before, but I'd like to. I'm like, all right, that's, all, that's your project. And she just took it, and, and at first she's like, I don't think I'm doing very good. And then it came out, and then if you get a shot of it later, it's, it's beautiful. Do you think the morale would be as high here if you didn't have this place? I'll be honest with you, no. I'm going to be straight up honest, no. Everybody looks forward to coming to the little TQ Black Sheep Coffee House. And word has traveled so fast. The, the number, uh, we're on a smaller side right by the lake and then you have to go a couple miles to get the main side and everybody there's another military battalion army battalion over there as well as the marines and every day i see more and more of those folks coming in and and just loving it and saying hey this is the place to be yeah most of the people that came in were very surprised of all the work that had taken place to get this place up and running um it was very needed because i mean so many people came from just our LSA and from the Marine side and uh, we had a lot of Navy people, a lot of firefighters came. Uh, it was real crowded that first day and it has pretty much kept steady ever since the place has been open but everybody was like wow this is a good thing. Um, I brought in a lot of coffee that I had sitting in my shop you know to uh, help out with the coffee and a lot of people is just so you know ecstatic about having this place to come because of the atmosphere and just get to sit down and, and you got CNN playing and you can drink coffee and socialize. Places like this? I think it's very unique because of the different places that we've been. When we go out on the road, you don't see a uh, coffee house. And sometimes when you go different places and you think, oh man, they got this. But then when people come here, they be like, man, I wish we were here uh, because we got our own rooms, we got our coffee shop, we got a mini PX. A um, lot of different facilities that the other posts with higher brass than what we have don't even have facilities like we have here. Like yes, just about everything that you've seen around here is what the soldiers have pitched in and, you know, long hours and built up. We have a few carpenters in the units and they have donated their time and effort and to make this place better. I mean, it was already pretty good when we got here, but now, you know, if the old units were to come back and see what we've done, they'd be like, wow, you know, we've improved the quality of life here. 
and the morale has, you know, really gone up. Well, we got the Internet Cafe, which is going to be moving downstairs. Also, pool tables. It's basically going to be the MWR. We have um, phones that are coming in, and so this place will probably be a 24-hour, around-the-clock, you know, spot for the LSA here at Spring Lake. Well, being a coffee coffee holic, I can only say for mine for sure. But uh, this, this is a great morale booster here. Uh, you know, I'm sure even you know non coffee drinkers, they just come check it out, would love it here. Uh, you know, you got a place to play checkers, read the paper. You know, just sit back and relax after a mission or before a mission. You know, so. I saw it from the Chow Hall the other day. I saw that black sheep coffee shop and I said I have to come check this out so what well, is this what you were expecting or uh, what was your impression of the coffee shop well I was really impressed because I thought maybe it would be something like the green beans coffee shops that they have through AFES where you have to come in and pay I mean this is really nice because you know everything's donated and uh, you get to make your own donations and everything so um, have you seen anything else like this the other places that you've been uh, no, not really. Uh, most of the other fobs, they've got like a you know an MWR tent set up, basically at every fob, uh, ping pong tables, things like that. But no, not really. Uh, you know, it's more like a socializing you know atmosphere. You know, this. Um, actually, Sergeant Weiss just came to me one afternoon. Um, I was at on lunch break, whatever, and he came to my door and said. I don't know you, but I need you to paint for me. And I said, okay. So I got in his gator and we're riding here. And then he just threw some boards at me and told me to slap some paint on him. I think, well, I did a sign up at Battalion, um, the headquarters sign. And um, I think Sergeant Blake had seen it and she liked it and said, we want this girl to paint our signs here. So um. gives me coffee. <laughs> No, I, I like to come here and hang out. You get to see some faces that you don't really see because, like I said, I'm in the 1073rd and we're like a mile and a half that way. 